Hey guys, it's SD, your host of the Life Fix Relationship Podcast, where people with all sorts of backgrounds, challenges, and life experience show us how they make their relationship extraordinary. Hey guys, I'm so glad you're here with me today because today our guest is someone I've been trying to get on for quite some time and she does such so much great stuff and is so busy that it took some time to finally be able to get her. Do you remember we had an episode 11 with Sarah Herbsman and episode 16, Dina Asfesser, speak a bit about Nurture Heart Approach? Well, I've gotten so many questions about it. People found it really interesting and were wondering how they could really use it in their lives that I decided to do a whole episode on implementing Nurture Heart Approach into your relationship. For this episode, I've gotten an advanced Nurture Heart Approach trainer who's been a social worker for over 20 years, working with all sorts of peoples, with principals, with couples, with students, in detention homes, in jails, everyone, and really trying to help build a child, to take away labels, and really help every person become the best version of themselves. So I'm so glad to have with us today, Ya'al Wolfish. Thank you so much for being here, Ya'al. You want to start by telling us what is Nurture Heart Approach and how it works? It's a relationship-based approach that was developed by a man named Howard Glasser. Uh, He was a therapist working with children and families and especially intense children. And there were some children that he wasn't really making any progress with. The more he tried and the parents tried, things really just got worse. I get that. I think a lot of parents, teachers, therapists, relationships have difficulties and they might talk about them and sometimes they get worse. So this man, Howard Glasser, began to intuit a connection between behavior and energy a child was receiving for it. And he started giving stories and analogies and people started making progress with their children. And so it was originally taught to therapists and parents working with difficult children But now we're really finding it's working for everyone, for every relationship, for anybody to get deeper in their relationships and connect better. How does it work? Like, how do we connect better with people? It's a three-prong approach, and it really works for everyone. So I'll just give you the foundation so we can start to discuss that. It's the first stand is absolutely no energy to negativity. So no long discussions, no reprimands, no lectures, no escalation about what is going wrong, right? We often energize, connect, have a lot of deep discussions about what's wrong. So no more of that. And the second stand is absolutely yes. So we're going to be relentless about creating, hijacking, nurturing any moment of success. See, we can connect and relate on so many levels and build any moment. And so we're going to refuse not to create and develop those moments of success. And the third stand is absolutely clear. So we're going to be clear about what we need, about the rules, if we're talking about relationships, about how we communicate, and we're going to be able to reset. So reset is the consequence in Nurtured Heart. It's really a way of setting limits and getting back on track. So whether it's with a child or in a relationship, we can just reset and get back on track. It's a life gift, really. Yeah. So let's go through each of those things. First one, no negative energy. What does that mean? How do we apply that? So in relationships, we could get really frustrated or angry or about any kinds of things. Let's say time is an issue or, um, you know, people are dependent on each other for chores in the house or whatever is going on. And often we might, we might give a lot of connection, relationship and energy and negativity. We might discuss it for a long time. You know, people they have long discussions at night about what's going wrong or with each other and what they need. So the idea is that we often use negative moments as teaching moments. Like we try to discuss things when things are going wrong. And that's when somebody is not open to making any change and connecting. The idea of the nurtured heart approach is absolutely yes. All the moments of success, that's when we can build them. You know, like let's say a man is not following through on his chores in the house and he takes out the garbage and the wife says to him, wow, thank you for taking out the garbage and for getting it out on time. It shows how responsible you are and how you care for our family. I really appreciate that. You really do that all the time. And I'm not noticing that, but today I'm thinking about how much that takes. And that's really 
recognized and appreciated. And then we can build those moments of success. So when a wife tells a husband, you know, you're being really responsible and helpful, those moments grow and she can notice him at other times, you know, when he's at on time, you know, he gets home from the office and she can recognize those moments. And that's how we build success. And that's how our relationships connect. Because when we speak from the heart authentically and connect and build the moments of success, they really grow. And it's amazing for me to see, I give a lot of workshops. I've been doing it for about four years. They're often regarding children and I'll have couples come in and they don't even like look like they're engaged or talking to each other. Their body language looks burnt out, depressed. There's no interaction. And I often do these six week workshops by the end, by I'd say by week two or three, they're looking at each other. They're talking, they're sharing success and their body language builds and it's open. And I find it amazing. And people say to me, by the way, don't tell anyone, but like, this isn't really affecting our parenting. This is affecting our relationship on a whole deeper level. And we're really working together to build success. It's an amazing, amazing method. Now that means that we never, ever, ever tell, let's say our husband to that he didn't take out the garbage? Um, no, so it's a three-stand approach. We're going to be very clear with what we need. So that third stand of clarity is a need for everyone to learn how to be clear about what they need, how to express themselves. And it's not that we're not expressing ourselves. We actually learn to be very clear. Like I really need, you know, to leave by seven o'clock and we can be clear about that. But we're, we're not having these long lectures, reprimands, discussions, long so how do we do it? right? So we, we learn to be very clear. I teach four techniques that create rich relationship and connection. And through those ways, you know, we start to notice what's right. You know, we might just notice our spouse like, wow, I, you know, I see you're working really hard. I'm noticing that you've been putting a lot of hard work and you're really determined to build your business, right? We might like create language of emotional nutrition. We're going to notice when rules aren't broken. So we might just say to them, like, let's say there was a woman that I spoke to that her husband would escalate often and he would have anger issues and she would be able to notice him. Like, thank you so much for expressing yourself. Like you didn't get all upset and frustrated and angry. You just told me what you needed. And then we learned to be very clear. Like, I need you to look at me when I'm talking. I know you're on your phone, but I, I need your eye contact. It makes me feel so much better. And then when they look up, they say, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And we start to build these techniques and these ways of connecting in a rich way. And also another tool that we can develop. So that wife that I was just talking about where the husband would escalate, he would start to rage out of control and she really didn't know what to do. And when she learned about the concept of resetting or getting back on track, she decided to use it with him. And she said, you know, would you mind if we reset? Like if you start to get a little bit upset, would you mind if I say to you, you know, can we just reset? And the first time he started to escalate, see escalations don't start right away out of control. They just start a little by little. So she would notice that and she would know, you know, they were down a bad road and they didn't know how to get back. And that first day she said to me, you know, I said, you know, can we reset? And he got frustrated and left the room. But when he came back, they started over and they didn't have that big escalation. And she said, I can't believe it, but we were able to reset. And yeah. so what we learn is these small moments build success. And that's where our powerful teaching moments are, our connection moments, our moments where our relationships get so much better. That Those are the moments. Resetting it is an amazing tool and aspect of Nutrihard Approach. You want to explain to us how it works and how we could start doing that? What's interesting about the word reset is I go into people's homes and I have never met them before. I never taught them nurtured heart, but they start escalating or they start talking to me about what's wrong. And I say, can we just reset this conversation? So people naturally know what the word means. You know, we reset our computer, we restart, we you know, start over, pause. So that's the idea. It's just the limit or the consequence. It's just a reset. It's a way of getting back on track. It's not punitive. It's not negative. It's not destructive. We're not screaming at anyone. We're offering them this opportunity. Can we just get back on track? And so with a child, we might let them know, you know, 
you know, let's reset. And then they know, okay, let's get back to our respectful conversation. We're going to get back to ourselves. And it's the same in relationships. We have this opportunity where we can get back on track. So as we begin to use this tool in, in innocuous moments, right? Let, let's say we're having a conversation and gets off track. Like we can even reset this podcast right now, right? We can reset at any moment. Okay, we're back on track. And as we begin to do this in innocuous moments, the power of it develops. And in difficult moments, we can tell that child or our spouse, you know, let's just reset. And that that power begins to grow. At the beginning, when I teach anyone this idea, they might be a little fearful. It's a little bit of a leap of faith. And in general, in regular approaches, we tend to escalate about what's wrong. You know, we might give, you know, long lectures. We might use punitive methods. We might keep escalating because we don't know what else to do. And that sometimes that happens with couples, even in amazing situations where they they end up, you know, having meetings or therapy and they might just be talking about what's wrong and it just continues to escalate. So I think that's just the typical way is to spend a lot of time talking about what's wrong. And whereas in the nurtured heart approach, we reset, we get back on track and we start building more success and positivity in all the moments that we want to build. Yeah. So just like, if you're having a difficult situation, things are going on, you're not sure the conversation's not going in the direction you want. You could literally reset, pause and say, okay, we don't want to go there. Let's go there instead. Yes. We can reset at any moment. And the more people develop this way of interacting, the stronger, the healthier, the more intentional their language is because our goal, right, is to be the best version of ourselves. And we want to build all the people around us. And the more we fuel our own moments of success and the more we focus and recognize that, about ourselves, about the people around us, the closer we get to other people and, and the stronger we are. See, there's this idea in the Nurtured Heart Approach, we often say thank you or good job to people. And, you know, people think they're being really nice. Like in the office, they might say to their, you know, worker, thanks so much, you know, great job. But do people really understand what thank you or great job is, right? We might just say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good job. Thank you. And the person might not feel anything, but when we stop and we recognize, wow, you put so much effort into that project and you came early in the morning and late at night and you put your all and it was really not simple for you, but you are so determined and so focused and you care so much about our clients and you're really unstoppable. And I really appreciate that. Thank you for all that hard work, right? When we stop and we say that and we notice someone, we're boosting them and we're building this language of emotional nutrition that builds and we connect and we create deep relationships and people respond to that. Yeah. So speaking of compliments, Nurture Heart Approach has a really specific way of giving compliments. You want to tell us how to do that? Right. So we, we want to be very intentional about our lens. We're focusing and building success. Any moment is a moment to connect. We can take a snapshot of any moment and really celebrate that moment. Like here you are on this podcast talking to me and taking it all in and asking very intentional questions so that you can help people understand how to connect. You're unstoppable in building people and helping them use their strength to share with others. We can take any moment and build that moment and create rich connections. So the Nurtured Heart Approach has powerful tools to create that success. So really, we don't have to wait for anything so amazing to happen to recognize success. Success could be any moment. Your success could be somebody just, you know, looking at me, like, thanks for looking at me and paying attention. I really appreciate that. And so we can recognize any moment a, a child might be just sitting and playing toys and we can say to them, wow, I see that you are building a really high tower and you separated all the blocks and you're building really high, right? So they didn't have to be anything so amazing. We could just notice them. Everybody wants to be seen and noticed and recognized. So just, just being very specific specific about noticing them. That's like one technique of the nurtured heart approach. Like another would be building moments of greatness where we label the moment and we create a 
positive quality. We discuss, you know, how whatever we want to see in the people around us, whether we want them to be focused, whether we we want to see their tenacity or strength or whatever we want to see, we're going to start to notice and recognize and be connected to that. Yeah. So let's just explain that. Like, let's say you want your husband to be more respectful to you. Let's say, hopefully that's not the case, but if you have that, then what you're going to do is you're going to try to find those little tiny moments in the everyday life where he anyways is respectful and just compliment him on that and label it and tell him that shows respect. Right. Yeah. And I love what you brought up is tiny little moments of success. We talk about baby steps, right? So when a baby starts walking, right, we, we cheer them on, we recognize them. And what about when they fall down? We don't make a big deal. We wait for them to get back up and we notice them and we cheer and we say, hooray, look at you, you're walking. Wow. And we let them be. And that's the idea. I think it's, you said about small steps of success. So we're going to look at success as baby steps, right? That husband that we want him to be more respectful. Like, you know, the day that he's home on time anyway, because something really exciting is happening, he's going to that sporting event or he has a dinner out and we say, thank you so much for being on time. That's very respectful. I really appreciate that. It shows how much you care about our relationship. And we build that moment and we build the success. As long as we're being authentic and truthful and from our heart, they're going to they're gonna get that. And as long as we're not trying Trying to say, you know, something that they're not doing, but for noticing that baby success of the moment, we can build that moment. And yeah. let's say he's not being healthy, you know, I'm just talking, you know, just thinking of a spousal situation, like the husband's overweight, he's not being healthy. And, you know, we cut up some fruit, and it's his favorite fruit, and he's eating it. We can recognize that, like, look at you really taking care of your health, like you're eating fruit, and you're being conscientious. And those moments build. And I find that even when couples joke around with each other and they do this, they start feeling the success. They can like smile and laugh about it, but they really builds. Yeah. 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 It does. Like it's some method that my parents been using the house probably 10 years more. And my siblings will tell my parents like, Hey, thank you for ordering that. That shows you really cared about us. Or you listened to my whole conversation that shows you were great listening skills and it's a joke they're just making fun of her for all the time that she did it to them by the end of the day that's what people want they want the connection that you really saw you noticed those little things in them and it makes a massive difference now do you want to tell us why we say we don't say you are responsible but that shows responsibility right so the idea is that we're connecting clear evidence with the quality of greatness so the more specific we are and we show a child or a spouse or anyone in our lives like what they're doing and what that shows about them the more it can connect like the more teeth it has the more strength it has for a person to absorb that you see especially in intense situations if we just say to a child whoa that was really smart or to a spouse like thanks so much that was like brilliant or that was helpful but we don't we don't give them any evidence of their success like they might just laugh off what we say but when we're really clear and specific it often is they're able to internalize it and if not at that moment it might take time in a really intense situation somebody might not take a compliment they might not take that recognition but I actually find it's interesting because I go to the ju- juvenile detention centers. I go to the psychiatric hospitals. I work with like a variety, a, a range of ages and stages. And like, I am kind of relentless in doing this with anybody. I'll tell you a story. I met this girl in a detention center. She broke the worker's nose. She was living in a shelter and she broke the worker's nose in the shelter. Probably something happened. She escalated and, you know, the worker's nose got broken and she was in the detention center because of that because she had nowhere to live and the judge put her there and she had really no affect looked a little little depressed you know she engaged respectfully but very minimally and then I said to her I said like what do you want to be one day when you're not detention center and she said I want to be a nurse and I said oh, wow, do you know what that says about you? You want to be a nurse that shows that you care and you're empathic and you want to build others. And she looked at me and she said, I I am, I am caring. And from that moment on, her face lit up. She was engaging with me. 
She was smiling. She really took that in and it was amazing. Like here she was, she broke a worker's nose and she's recognizing that she wants to be a nurse. She cares about other people. She's empathic. So I find that I will try it in any situation, but definitely with intense situations in intense relationships. Yeah, when I go to the detention center, I'm not in that relationship. I'm coming from the outside, but with a house that's really intense or any kind of relationship, we kind of have to be unstoppable in our desire to build that greatness, to see their greatness, to recognize it. And I find that it works. It really does. Yeah, it really does. So three steps if a person wants to start doing it today. No negative attention, lots of positive energy and positive attention, and being really clear about what we want. And together with that is reset. Yeah, it's all about that connection, relationship, energy. It's like connecting on a deep level with who we are and who we want the people around us to be and what we want to build around us. And whatever we energize, whatever we give connection, relationship, and energy to is going to grow. So we're going to decide how and when we want to give that energy, connection, and relationship. Yeah, so someone who is so used to giving negative energy, like most of us, how could they break that pattern and stop giving so much energy to the negative stuff and more to the positive stuff? The first step is just being aware. Just like kind of paying attention and being aware of what we're giving our energy to. The second step I'd say is being like very intentional. We decide what we want to see and what we want to energize. And, you know, at any moment we can build success and we can just start in um, small ways. You know, those baby steps we were talking about. Yeah. Like we can we can notice anything. So I find for people that are really uncomfortable with it, they, they might feel more comfortable texting or a note or something where they feel is, you know, a little less scary they might feel more comfortable trying it out with a little kid in their life like there's some people that will say you know I had a niece or nephew come over and I was able to recognize them and they loved it it's also noticing our own baby steps let's say we do that and we write a note or we recognize a little child right or we we go to the supermarket and we say wow I really appreciate you bagging up all my stuff I'm sure it's really not easy to work right now during COVID and you're doing you're doing this and I appreciate that and we can recognize recognize anyone. And as we notice our own steps in the right direction, they build. So if we say, oh, like, wow, I really did that. I was able to recognize someone. It was so awkward. At first, it might seem really awkward, but I did it. And that shows that I really care about building success around me. So as we notice ourselves, that's what grows. Yeah, I like that. You're not only noticing the other person, but you're also noticing the good things in you. It's really important and many times it's forgotten. Also, another amazing thing I like about inner child approach is the way you could build the inner wealth of a person. You could help them find different things that they do match a character trait that you think is important for them to have. For example, choose the trait of caring. Every single little tiny thing that they do, you're going to compliment them and tell them that, wow, you brought this to the table. That shows you are caring. Or you brought me home flowers, that shows you are caring. Or you're asking about my day, that shows you are caring. And over and over again, you're proving to them that they're really caring so that they could go and see that they could be a caring person. And you could do it with any trait. You want them to be responsible. You want them to have eye contact, whatever you want. And you could show them that it's possible that they could do it. Yeah, so that's our goal is really to like, as you said, to develop inner wealth or the inner world of our children or the people around us and our own inner world. And as it grows, like as we notice those steps and as we use that emotional and nutritious language and as we are intentional about what we want to energize and as we get clear about what we need, that's like a, that's also like each one of these pieces I find is integral to making it work, right? It's like, we can't really fuel all the positivity around us and in ourselves while we're not clear about what we need, right? Like we can't just like in the middle of nowhere, start like recognizing everybody while we're like, you know, in the middle of a, you know, fire of like unhappiness or whatever. We might have to be really clear about what we need. And then we can be intentional about not giving energy to negativity and totally energizing every moment of success. And it, it just because we're clear doesn't mean we get everything that we want right away, but that clarity will allow us to speak clearly, 
to say what we need, and then to energize every step in the right direction. I feel like that's so life-changing, at least for me it was, and for the people that I work with, it's unreal. You know, it's easy in this world to notice everything wrong around us, to be like kind of depressed from everything, to, to like energize our own sense of insecurity, anxiety, depression. It's so easy to do that. This was a success story. This woman told me that she's um, an obsessive compulsive eater and her daughter is two. She's like getting overweight, her daughter, and she's only 10 years old. And the mom, as she's telling me this, I, I say to her, wait, don't you work out every day? And she said, yeah. I said, like, you look slim and you look like you take care of yourself. And she said, I do, but you know, I'm, I'm an overeater. I've been in, you know, overeaters anonymous for years. And if I go off track, I can't stop myself. I eat bags and bags of cookies and I don't even know what to do. And my daughter's doing the same thing. So anyway, I say to her, you know, why don't you start noticing all your success? Like you're committed to your health, you eat healthy, you exercise every day. Why don't you start focusing on those labels and see if that helps you? Anyway, a few weeks later, she says to me, I broke program. And I said, what, what, what happened? And she said, I, I went off track. I said, what did you eat? She said, a matzah, like one board of matzah. And I said, what else? And she said, nothing else. And I said to her, what does that say about you? That's really incredible. Like you stepped out of program and you only eat one matzah and nothing else. And she said, you know, I think I can reset. I was able to reset. And I said, yeah, because you're, you're determined and you have tenacity and you have self care and you've been building yourself. And so I said to her, you know what? Like maybe now you can start recognizing your daughter too for her moments of success when she's able to reset herself, when she is eating healthy, when you're going for a walk together. And maybe we can just, you know, stop these labels of, you know, obsessive compulsive eating and, you know, this daughter who's like set up for this. Maybe we can stop that and start energizing her for all her creativity and for her energy and for expressing herself. And I'm really passionate about this. I feel like we can do so much in this world by noticing our own strengths and success and building that. It's true. We have to focus on where we want, where we want to go. What do we want out of it, right? Well, thank you so much. It was great talking to you. Thanks for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. And I appreciated all your questions that were very specific. And it was amazing to speak to someone who's been raised with this idea and that it's been part of your household. So I think that was like a whole new level, hearing the experience on your end, kind of like living with it. Yeah. It very powerful. <laughs> well, that was a nurture heart approach compliment. So <laughs> thanks for that. <laughs> Did you enjoy that episode? Could you do me a personal favor and subscribe and leave a review? It would mean a lot to me. Thank you so much and have an awesome day.